okay yeah uh, hi so i have started the recording it's uh, 7 5 pm uh, we have roughly about uh, uh, 9 10 people who are joining in for today's lecture so i think uh, this is a decent uh, uh, size so we can probably start with the lecture and if more people will join they'll uh, join midway so uh, hello all good evening uh, welcome to the week 2 tutorial session for the reinforcement learning course by nptl so to start off uh, i'll start off with a, a quick introduction about me so for those who are uh, joining you uh, my name is manav mishra i am a phd student at the uh, ecs department uh, from iiscr bhopal and uh, i'll be one of your ta for uh, the course on reinforcement learning as part of the nptl mooc program uh, this is the week two lecture. I had uh, previously uploaded the week one lecture, which was pre-recorded. You might uh, have gotten notification from the uh, course announcement webpage, and it's available on YouTube with all the relevant links and the PDF files. Okay, so uh, today's motive uh, or today's plan that I have uh, with my in my mind is uh, I'll do a quick 15-20 uh, minute roundabout of uh, what all has been covered in the week two lecture uh just uh give a brief a top overview of uh, the different different concepts that have been presented then uh i'll try to solve the uh, uh week two assignment the non-graded one not the graded one i'll uh we'll discuss the week two non-graded assignments and uh towards the end i i have uh created a collab file so i can give you some sort of a hands-on training with a multi-arm bandit problem so i can uh share the file with you all so uh, there are some uh, there are some certain blocks where you have to fill in your code and uh, that's uh, the second half of uh, what uh, i have in mind let's see how uh, it goes so uh, okay so we'll uh, uh, move ahead uh, Sorry, it takes a bit of time. So can you see the next slide or is it still on a, a previous slide? Still in the previous slide, slides, sir. Slides are not moving. Oh, okay. Now. Okay, but uh, here in my sign device, it has moved. Maybe I should check my internet connectivity. Just a second. Maybe some internet issue. The Wi-Fi uh, probably is not, uh, the device is not catching the Wi-Fi signal. I'll quickly change the network and get back. Okay, maybe I should just uh, rejoin the meet.
Okay, uh, sorry, sorry for the delay. Uh, now you can see my screen, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. So uh, what I'll try to do is, uh, I'll take around uh, 20 minutes to give a brief, uh, like a uh, top overview, Not I'll, I'll not go into the details of what all proofs have been covered in the class or uh, the intuition behind everything, but I'll just give a brief understanding of what uh, each algorithm does and then uh, I'll move to the uh, ungraded assignment, okay? And meanwhile, if you have any other doubt uh, in between, you can uh, always unmute and ask. So uh, uh, first uh, concept that the professor covered in week two was uh, something known as the UCB1 algorithm. So this is uh, a different kind of a strategy uh, used to solve the multi unbanded problem. In week one, we had seen two different uh, uh, search strategies. One was the uh, epsilon greedy policy, uh, and the second was the uh, softmax policy. So uh, both of them uh, perform some sort of exploration and exploitation. What happens in epsilon greedy algorithm is that uh, you uh, behave greedily uh, most of the times, uh, which is one minus epsilon times you with probability one minus epsilon, you uh, behave greedily, but with probability epsilon, you take a random action, uh, which is uh, a non-optimal, a random non-optimal action. So that's the basic concept behind the epsilon greedy algorithm. Second algorithm was the softmax uh, algorithm. In that, what you do is you compare basically the uh, strength or uh, the yeah the strength of uh, one uh, action over the other. So you have uh, a Q value associated with each action. You uh, take the softmax, uh, compute the softmax value for each uh, particular uh, uh, Q value, and then uh, based on that, based on whatever probability you get, you sample from that. So that uh, takes into account the uh, exploration in softmax policy. So here, uh, what happens uh, in the epsilon greedy policy is that uh, in epsilon greedy, you do something like you do something like Sorry. Uh, you do something like this with probability of one minus epsilon. You uh, sorry uh, with with probability one minus epsilon. Your action that you select is argmax of a. Of uh, whatever Q star that you have accumulated till that point. This is the exploitation part. And with the remaining uh, epsilon probability, uh, you select an action which is, you know, random of A, where A is the action space. Okay, so. Uh, you uh, randomly select an action from uh, the action space A. So you see what happens here is in the uh, epsilon greedy policy, you have this this exploration policy is uh, somewhat uh, random, right? Uh, you need to uh, generate a ra you need to select an ra action randomly. So there is no deterministic way to go about this, correct? So uh, UCB one algorithm uh, basically solves that issue. So here the exploration is uh, somewhat random. I'm, Randomly selecting, uh, if I have a probability with uh, probability epsilon, I'm randomly selecting uh, one action which uh, is not the optimal action, and then I, the uh, uh, rest of the time, I behave greedily. Though it gives good result, but uh, if you want to do a, a good analysis of the uh, uh, the regret optimality or the pack optimality, so you need to have some sort of a, a, a determine deterministic or an algorithmic way to. Uh, reach at the solution so uh, one such way is uh, known as the uh, ucb1 algorithm so what happens in the ucb1 algorithm is uh, at every time step uh, you select the action such that it is the arg max of q star of a plus there is some additional variance term which is twice ln of n divided by uh, n of uh, j. Uh, sorry. So 
So I should also change this. This is so. Uh, what it tells me, what this uh, algorithm tells me, is that uh, instead of only selecting uh, the action which has the highest Q value, I'm also uh, taking into consideration some sort of a standard deviation around the uh, estimated uh, Q value that I have. So this uh, this term can be thought of as a standard deviation around the uh, estimated mean that I have uh, that I have accumulated so far. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the extra term that I have. So here n uh, the small n here represents how many times uh, I have uh, pulled the arms, irrespective of whether I've pulled arm i or not, and the total number of arm pulls that I've done till that time step. And nj is the total number of times that I've selected arm j. Okay. So uh, what it does is, uh, with time, um, as you pull more and more number of arm, uh, as you pull more and more number of arm j with increasing number of this thing, this quantity goes on decreasing. OK, so uh, to explain it better, uh, like Sir had taught in the class, so if I have, let's say, uh, this is my uh, reward, and this is my Q, Q estimate, OK? If, if, if I have uh, something like this, uh, so <clears throat> let's say, uh, Sorry, I should uh, use capital Q. So my uh, capital Q1, sorry, the Q star of capital Q star of uh, one. This is Q star of two. Let's say I have two arms, okay. Uh, mean that I have, and the confidence interval looks something like this, and this is for arm two. Let's say this is my estimated mean. And this is what the confidence interval looks like. OK. So all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to select those actions whose confidence interval uh, is also uh, taken into consideration when I'm selecting an action. So in that way, I always don't always uh, take the greedy action. But uh, because of this uh, uh, standard deviation or the error term, I'm also uh, taking some sort of exploration into account. So uh, what happens is with time, as I sample more and more number of arm j, uh, this uh, number n of j keeps on increasing. With increase in the number of nj, uh, this quantity, this error quantity keeps on decreasing. So if I uh, basically sample more and more uh, number of uh, uh, times arm j, so I'm reducing the uncertainty that I have uh, associated with uh, pulling arm j. So I can say that my confidence keeps on increasing. With more and more number of arm pulls, um, I'm increasing my confidence towards the true uh, q star, small q star one. Uh, and uh, that way, I'm going closer and closer to my uh, desired uh, objective. OK. And uh, the upper the uh, term in the numerator is the ln n term, which uh, basically says that for the time instance that I did not pull uh, arm j, but uh, I kept on pulling some other arm. So the uncertainty uh, keeps growing in uh, keeps growing as a function of ln of n. So uh, initially it uh, grows very rapidly, but with time it uh, sort of saturates. It grows, but at the, at a slower pace. So what happens is with time, this uh, entire term, uh, I have a, a lawn n term which keeps on growing for each time I neglect arm j. And there is a nj term in the denominator, which basically uh, count, keeps account of all the times I have pulled arm j and it uh, reduces my uncertainty. So if I uh, take a look at the lo long run, this 1 by nj term will dominate this lawn n term. So if, uh, because this lawn n terms would saturate over time, and this nj term uh, basically pulls uh, the entire confidence down. So uh, it says that basically with uh, sufficient number of uh, arm pull, uh, if I have made sufficient number of arm pull, that means I have explored the environment enough. And now I can uh, say with uh, decent confidence which of them is the optimal arm, and I can go ahead with that. So this is the overview of uh, the UCB1 algorithm. Uh, 
Okay, next, uh, I think, uh, sir, touched upon the derivations for the uh, regret bound for the UCB algorithm. Uh, I'll just uh, show the result. I won't go how we get into the result. Uh, if you need some, uh, if you need additional uh, reading materials, you can uh, always uh, fi find it in the discussion forum. We we are monitoring the discussion forum. Any questions asked, we are uh, answering them. So uh, what uh, Chernoff Hobding bound tells me is that uh, so let uh, uh, x1, x2, x2, xn be random variables with some common range. So let x1, x2 to xn be some random variables with common range 0 to 1, and such that the expectations of uh, the last uh, 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 random variable xt, given uh, I have knowledge of the previous random variable, is uh, given as mu. Okay. So if the expected uh, mean of that random variable is mu, and let sn be uh, the mean of all the samples that I've drawn from these random distributions. Then uh, I can say for all a greater than zero, we have uh, these two uh, important results. Okay. So what it tells me is that the probability that uh, the estimated mean that I have is far greater or uh, is greater than uh, is at a is at a greater distance uh, than uh, a from the true esti uh, from the true mean uh, is bounded by uh, this value, which is uh, uh, e to the power minus two a square n. So uh, the probability that uh, the estimate that I have made is even further than uh, some uh, say some uh, distance a is bounded by this uh, uh, by this quantity, and uh, the other way around that uh, the uh, estimate that I make is uh, at the lower spectrum uh, and at uh, at a distance uh, greater than uh, a is again uh, bounded by this this quantity given here. So this is uh, some. This is an important uh, result that uh, we don't need to prove how we get here, but uh, this result is uh, actually useful when uh, we try to uh, do the derivations for the regret bound and the pack bounds. Okay, so uh, this was uh, something which was covered, and then uh, uh, lastly, what we did was uh, in the in the regret bound, we found out that the uh, for the UCB one algorithm, the regret brown uh, grows at the rate of ln of n. Okay, so I think this thing is incorrect. This should be eight. Uh, so, uh, so the uh, maximum possible regret after n actions is 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 this quantity. This is the uh, maximum, the upper bound for the regret that one can get, one can expect to get if one follows the UCB one algorithm. So, my regret is bounded by this quantity. Uh, so you see that. Uh, this grows at a rate of ln of n. So with uh, increasing number of uh, uh, action samples that I uh, draw, I my regret uh, uh, grows at the rate of ln of n. Okay. So this is the uh, regret bound for the UCB1 algorithm. Uh, or rather, this yeah, this is a regret bound for the UCB1 algorithm. So uh, this algorithm, uh, UCB1 algorithm, is uh, is very important to uh, basically. Uh, Keep a check on the uh, regret that we want uh, when we are doing uh, the multi unbanded problem. Uh, next, uh, beyond the uh, UCB1 algorithm, there is something known as a naive algorithm. So now, uh, what we are doing is we are uh, looking at the uh, uh, pack pack bounds. Okay, so we have seen the regret bounds. Now we look at uh, different different uh, pack uh, bounds that we can get. So uh, here the input is some epsilon, some delta, which are positive numbers. The output is the arm that I should pull. So uh, the algorithm goes like this for arm uh, A belonging to action space. So what I need to do is I should uh, sample each arm at least uh, L times, where L is this quantity here. OK, so L is this number. So uh, I should sample each arm at least this many times, at least L times. After I've done that, after I've done that, so mm, then I say that let P A be the average reward of arm A. So after I've sampled L uh, this L many times, I have uh, some average reward, which I'll denote by P of A for arm A. And uh, once I've uh, done everything, then uh, the output arm that I get is nothing but the arm max of P of A. So this is a very naive algorithm. And the sample complexity goes as follows. So it has a sample complexity of uh, 
uh, n by uh, epsilon square and ln of n by d. Okay, so you can see how this comes about, right? So this is the sample complexity for uh, this naive algorithm. So the difficulty here is to show that it achieves the desired performance guarantees. So uh, this is uh, one thing which was covered in when we are looking at the pack uh, uh, the pack bound bounding uh, problem. And uh, to improve on that, uh, uh, we uh, arrived on something known as, or rather, we introduced something known as the uh, median elimination algorithm. So you see, the problem with naive algorithm is that the complexity has the uh, log n by delta dependencies. So uh, we would hope for uh, uh, some uh, complexity which is uh, O n plus some factors dependent on uh, epsilon and delta, rather than having a log n dependency. We would want our sample uh, efficiency to uh, have some some uh, ON dependency plus uh, some factors of uh, epsilon and delta, but uh, not in the sample complexity itself. Okay, so uh, uh, these guys they wrote a paper and uh, they basically devised some sort of an action elimination procedure. So uh, instead of uh, doing some uh, L number of samples for each arm and then uh, selecting the uh, output arm from that uh, uh, whatever estimate that I that we have. So they devised a round based uh, L, uh, they devised a round uh, based uh, algorithm where uh, wherein uh, you basically sample uh, all the arms for for some Z number of times. And then the key idea is you eliminate some of the arms after each round of sampling. So this is the main idea behind the uh, mean uh, elimination algorithm, okay? And uh, I think we are stuck again. No, okay. Okay, so uh, I'll give a very uh, simple, uh, intuitive understanding of what mean uh, elimination algorithm does. So uh, one of my friend has uh, written a medium article. I'll just refer to whatever example he has used. So let's say you have a dog. Okay, so let's say you have uh, some dog. And uh, uh, as as a pet owner, you want to figure out basically what what is the best brand of dog food that my dog can eat. Okay, so the dog has some preference, but uh, my job is to figure out uh, what what brand of uh, dog food it uh, it likes. Okay, so now uh, with the dog, there are some uncertainties uh, associated with it. Okay, so if someday I uh, give dog a brand, uh, let's say I number it one, two, three, four. Five, six. These are the six brands that I have. Let's say I feed my dog brand five some some day. So uh, some days it might have happened that it is uh, very hungry, or some days it might happen is that the dog is very sick, so it uh, uh, doesn't like brand five at all. Or some days it might happen that it's in a different mood; it wants to try something else. Okay. So uh, taking uh, one sample of uh, taking uh, a single sample is not uh, enough to eliminate uh, the best brand which I want for my dog. Okay. So what I want to do is, I basically want to, uh, I want my dog to try each brand uh, at least some uh, L times. Okay. Oh, I shouldn't use L. Uh, some some number. Let's say Z. I want. Sorry. I want my dog to try each arm at least Z times. Sorry, each each brand at least Z times. And after I've uh, tried each of them a Z number of times, what I'll do is I have some uh, uh, estimate. Okay, what is the reward estimate for each of the associated brand? Then I uh, arrange it in an ascending order, find out the median of uh, of the Q values, and then uh, all the all the uh, all the brands which have uh, a Q value which is lower than the median, I eliminate them. So uh, let's say uh, after round one, I eliminate uh, uh, three of them, okay? Because I, I I am arranging it in ascending order and taking a median, so half of them will be eliminated at each time step. So let's say after uh, round one, after I've uh, made my dog try each of the dog food at least z times, I eliminate three, okay? So this is uh, what we get after doing this, uh, like uh, eliminating uh, all the values which is lower than the median okay and then uh, next time what i do is i repeat the process again in round two i'll again uh, ask my dog to try all the remaining brands z more times 
and then based on that i'll remain uh, i'll uh, remove the remaining half okay so let's say i remove this this and I, i'll keep on doing this until i end up with only one arm or only one brand and then i can say that this is the optimal uh, or or this is the best uh, uh, possible dog food that i want okay so this is the basic idea behind the me, uh, median elimination algorithm so uh, what uh, this does is it uh, basically uh, gives me a sample complex it gives me a sample complexity which uh, no 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 uh, so uh, here the z the z that i am talking about how many times uh, i need to feed uh, the dog at the uh, beginning of each round is basically this this uh, magic quantity okay so if i feed my dog uh, this many number of times then i get some estimate based on which i compute the mean and uh, sorry the median and eliminate half of them so uh, this uh, at the end the uh, brand that i'm left with it uh, is not always the uh, optimal arm a uh, a star it 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 need, need, is not not always it's not always a a star okay but uh, what i can say with guarantee is that uh, the solution that i get the uh, brand that i uh, am, am ending up with is uh, at least some is uh, is at a distance uh, of uh, a minus uh, a minus uh, epsilon and i can say this with a probability of uh, 1 minus uh, delta okay so the probability that i end up so the arm that i end up is uh, okay i i should write it like this uh, okay yeah so uh, the probability the arm a j that i have selected is greater than uh or equal to the optimal optimal arm a star minus epsilon uh i can say that uh, this is optimal uh, with uh, a probability of 1 minus delta okay so this is the basic idea of the uh, median elimination algorithm so i might not be very uh, sound with the notations right now but uh, i'm just trying to give you a brief overview okay so this is what uh, we mean by the median elimination algorithm uh, so if this is fine we'll move ahead so uh, what we see is we uh, with uh, with some uh, proofs and calculations what we are able to show is that the mean the median elimination algorithm is nothing but it's the epsilon delta uh, pack with this this sample complexity okay so this is the uh, upper bound on the number of samples that i need to draw in order to achieve this this pack uh, optimality okay so uh, here what i'm doing is i'm basically bounding the probability of eliminating the optimal arm in each round so uh, at the end of each round i have a probability of uh, delta or rather i should say i have a probability of delta l uh, which uh, with which i can eliminate the optimal arm okay uh, and uh, we see that this delta l with uh, increase in the number of rounds i am decreasing with increasing number of l i'm uh, decreasing the delta that i have okay so and i'm decreasing the distance that i want to uh, uh, that from which i want uh, basically the error distance or uh, how close i want uh, to be within the optimal arm okay so uh, yeah this is the median elimination algorithm uh, broadly what uh, uh, sir has covered till now uh, yeah and uh, lastly uh, another method that uh, uh, people often use or in recent times people have been using is something known as the thomson sampling for band rates okay so uh, what it does is uh, it takes a bayesian viewpoint into account rather than the usual uh, frequentist approach we uh, look at it from a bayesian viewpoint so uh, what it does is uh, you basically make an assumption of the true uh, of the true estimate of uh, the reward for each arms okay so let's say if i have uh, this is the rewards and this is the q values and then a small 
the small q values okay so let's say i have only two arms okay so let's say i have only two arms like this and another arm like this so uh, i make some uh, underlying assumption so this is here i am assuming the distribution is gaussian and it's bounded between 0 and 1 so usually gaussians have a bound from minus infinity to infinity but you can always make a change of variable like uh, instead of uh, x you uh, uh, replace it by tan h of x the tan hyperbolic function so that way you get the gaussian which is bounded between 0 and 1 so here this is necessary the reward support should be between 0 and 1 so assuming that i have some sort of a gaussian distribution so i make some estimate of uh, i make some estimate of my q q star of 1 and q star of 2 this is uh, some assumption that i make of my underlying distribution and then i draw some random samples okay from here let's say i draw this sample and from here i draw this sample so this is uh, now my true estimate or you can say it's the estimate of the target which i want to achieve okay because i've sampled from this distribution so this is q star of 1 and this is q star of 2 okay so this is the target that i want to achieve uh, uh, my estimate to reach towards and then what i do is i uh, pull the arm okay once i pull the arm i get some estimate which is the capital uh, capital q1 or capital q2 and then i compare like uh, the arm that i've pulled and the uh, basically the arm that i've uh, pulled based on the q the capital q value estimate and the arm which uh, i should have gotten based on the estimate that from the sample that i've done drawn I compare with them, and if they don't match, then I basically uh, uh, refit my Gaussian in order to uh, match that, match whatever uh, the target that I want to achieve and the estimate that I'm making. And based on that, I uh, with time the uh, graph keeps on evolving, and uh, over time uh, it slowly like let's say in the next iteration, let's say in the next iteration you have uh, uh, some some smaller. Uh, a smaller uncertainty around that graph and also this this becomes smaller after after a certain number of rounds and uh with time uh like after taking enough after enough number of samples i can expect that it should uh converge to the true q star estimate that i want to achieve so if this is the mean i expect with time i should probably converge to this value which is the true mean of this Gaussian okay of course the RL agent doesn't have access to uh, uh, or the uh, agent which is playing the bandit uh, the bandit game they don't have access to this uh, true algorithm so that's why we make some underlying assumption of the distribution of uh, whatever the true value could be and uh, based on that we are updating our estimate and we are also estimating the probability for the target which we want to reach okay so this is uh, the idea of but uh, Mr. I have a Thompson. question here. Yeah. Um, what makes it so different? All we are doing is just sampling the two arms, correct? And as a result of those sampling, the uh, the distribution like kind of collapses to the uh, true value. No. So here you are taking two distributions distributions into account. One is the uh, prior distribution, and one is the posterior distribution. Okay. So this distribution that I'm showing on screen is something known as a prior. That's uh, some sort of an assumption that you're making about the true true sam uh, sample estimate okay so uh, basically uh, what you do is uh, you have some i uh, in in the normal approach what you do is you don't care what my q star is i simply take my capital q i draw a lot of samples i perform uh, i keep drawing samples and then uh, eventually i expect that with uh, like large number of samples i should uh, it should converge to my q star of uh, i right yeah but here what you're doing is uh, this is uh, a different viewpoint to look at it so uh, the way which we have been doing before is uh, a frequentist approach or the uh, standard approach what we are using 
but uh, what we are doing here is uh, something known as a bayesian approach okay so here what you are doing is you are uh, incorporating your belief of uh, what the distribution of the uh, true q estimate uh, of the true q value is and uh, i am updating my belief based on whatever samples that i have made so i'm incorporating this belief into my probability so this is the difference uh yeah all that that is okay but in your yeah. in this algorithm which you where there's a for each and all that right okay okay yeah. all that we are doing is just looping through the through t and then you are playing the each arm and okay uh, that's it like what is uh, where where does prior come into the picture here that's what i'm uh, finding it difficult to understand okay so you are talking about this this thing right right okay uh, uh so for each answer uh... i mean even if it is not this also based on what mm -hmm. you said right uh, okay mm -hmm. i get that we assume prior to be gaussian and then uh, the real one may may not be gaussian but because of the samples and all it will converge to some uh, value uh, but that is again same as the uh, the frequency test approach which uh, had no no no, no. in that in that approach How is this different from the normal one yeah so in the frequentist approach this thing is fixed always okay you don't change this the target is always fixed i'm not updating my target belief this is something which i'm trying to achieve uh and uh, i i do that by you know whatever q i have which is r1 sorry R1 plus dot dot Rn divided by n. Okay, so if I uh, get some n number of samples, I expect that with time I should con uh, this should converge to my Q star. Okay, so I don't I don't touch my Q star. So this uh, that's the difference. So uh, we are not taking any any sort of belief on what my Q star uh, should be. I'm not taking into account what uh, what could be the underlying distribution of the Q star. But uh, what I'm doing is I'm just manipulating my uh, uh estimate in order to converge to the q star which is uh which is unknown to us okay but here what we are doing is we are making some sort of an assumption uh, i mean yeah I, I understand your point like uh, you can understand what is happening but uh, in the algorithm you want to know how this is being incorporated right, right yes ah uh, okay mm. uh so that i think uh, even I, I need to maybe take a look uh, and get back to you sure because, okay thank okay. you okay cool cool uh okay could you please the explain that line how how how, how are we updating s and of t like if r equal to one then uh what are we doing there how are we uh that line can you please which which line if i uh, in that algorithm part uh in mm -hmm. loop, if r uh, mm -hmm. equals to one then yeah. after that, uh, like, uh, what is R equals to one? Like, I, I can't understand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I should uh, explain the algorithm here, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, here, what, what we have is for each uh, t, which starts from one till uh, uh, whatever time we have. So for each arm, I sample uh, theta t from the beta distribution. I sample a point, uh, which is theta it from the beta distribution. We are assuming here to be a beta distribution in the example given here i assume this to be a gaussian but uh, any any distribution is fine uh, uh, this i have basically transformed into a zero one gaussian distribution uh, but yeah so uh, you are drawing a sample theta t then uh, based on that you play the r r max of theta t and observe the reward mm. So R here is not clear. Okay, it's not clear for me as well. So there is an R which pops up. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think this this algorithm is uh, a bit problematic. I I understand there are some variables that are popping up. Uh, yeah. I, I I'll I'll get back. I, I'll probably uh, correct sure. it and get Thank back you. by next week. Okay. Okay. Sorry, sorry about this. Uh, I probably should have uh, checked this. Okay, uh, 
we'll we'll get back to this later okay so uh moving on yeah i think uh this was roughly what was covered in uh, week two now uh what uh, i'll do is i'll quickly uh solve the four assignment questions and i'll uh tell you the uh, coding part i'll get to the coding part okay in the last 10 minutes so i have three minutes i'll complete uh, the non-graded assignment so which of the following is true for the ucb algorithm okay so the action with the highest q value is chosen at every iteration this is wrong okay the reason is if i do that this is a greedy action ucb takes into account the uh, error term with each uh, each action okay so oh okay. Yeah, so the first choice is incorrect. Uh, second choice is after a very large number of iterations, the confidence intervals of unselected actions will not change much. Will not uh, change much. So this is uh, also not true. The confidence interval of the for uh, for unselected actions, the confidence interval grows uh, by a log of n. So uh, it will change, but it will change with uh, log of n. Yeah, so, uh, but it says after very large number of iterations, it will not change much because uh, it grows by log of n. So with uh, after large number of iterations, the log uh, sort of saturates. So uh, you can uh, tell that option two is correct. Okay, so we'll look at option three and four and then get back to option, option two. Option three is the true expected value of an action always lie within its uh, estimated confidence interval. This is not true uh, because uh, it depends okay what by what parameter we want to explore or what is the estimate of the confidence interval that we are taking so it's not always uh, 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 this statement that the true expected value always lie within its uh, confidence interval is not correct and then uh, lastly with small probability epsilon we select a random action to select adequate exploration of the action space so this is not uh, ucb algorithm but the uh, epsilon greedy uh, algorithm so in ucb we don't have any epsilon parameter so here we can say that option two is the correct answer in this case. Okay, it says that after very large number of iterations, the confidence interval of unselected actions will not change much because because it grows by log of t and uh, log of t with uh, increasing number of n it sort of saturates. Okay. Uh, second is uh, I think uh, it's uh, more of a uh, mathematical, uh, just uh, simple arithmetic uh, operation you need to do to solve this question. So. What you need to do is you take arm one for arm one. I calculate my Q hundred of uh, one plus twice ln of hundred divided by uh, n of one. Okay. I compute the value. Then for arm two, I'll do Q one hundred of two plus again. Okay, uh, and uh, then I do ln of 100 divided by n of 2. Okay, and uh, I do that for arm 3 and 4. And uh, which of which of uh, this quantity is the highest? I basically pull that arm. This is the standard UCB1 algorithm. So if you uh, do the computation, you will get answer as arm 2. Okay. And then uh, third question uh, in the medium uh, in the median elimination method for the uh, epsilon delta pack bound, we claim that for uh, every phase L, we have some probability which uh, which is a less than or equal to b plus uh, epsilon L is greater than one minus delta L. So here SL is the set of arms remaining in the Lth phase, and so uh, I need to uh, basically uh, tell which is correct uh, which is the correct definition for a and b okay so uh, here what we do is uh, what is a and what is b we need to find out what is a here and what is b okay so if you look at the uh, definition for the uh, median elimination uh, method what you find is you have uh, yeah so the uh, MEA epsilon delta 
is a pack epsilon uh, it it shows pack epsilon delta optimality uh in the following way okay so you have probability of uh arg max of uh, a prime from q of uh a of l from q of q star of a of l so uh, uh, should i say this no this quantity should be less than equal to uh R max of a uh, l plus one q star of a l plus one, which is bounded by some epsilon l. Okay. So basically, what it tells me is that uh, whatever uh, whatever uh, estimate whatever optimal estimate that i whatever optimal q estimate that i have in the l plus one at phase uh, the uh, in the l plus one at phase the uh, estimate that i have or the arm that i will select this will uh, so i uh, basically if, uh, at the lth phase my uh, optimal arm that i have if at the lth phase the optimal arm that i have is let's say here okay a star of L. So in the next phase, so this is the LH, LH round. So in the, uh, okay, I should probably rewrite this thing. Yeah, so, uh, I have a l a star this is uh, should i say this is my q star of a of l and uh, this is my q star of a of l plus one okay so uh what it says is uh this quantity the uh, at the l plus uh at the l plus one at uh, stage or the l plus one at phase the uh, maximum uh, reward of the true best arm should be uh, basically uh, plus should be basically uh, only uh, less than this quantity by some epsilon quantity by some epsilon l quantity okay this is the ba basic uh, definition for the median elimination arm so if i add uh, some epsilon uh, quantity to it uh, what I should get, whatever uh, the arm that I should get, should be better than the uh, arm in the previous L stage. So uh, again, what it's saying is, at the end of uh, each round, so whatever optimal that I, whatever optimal arm that I had, let's say this is the optimal arm that I had at the end of round L. So in the next stage, the uh, next optimal arm that I would have. Next optimal arm that I would have should be uh, should be uh, uh, should have a maximum uh, distance of epsilon of L. So this is the uh, definition for the median elimination arm, which I also discussed two three slides ago. At the end of each round, I don't get the absolute optimal arm, but whatever optimal arm that I get, it should be uh, at an epsilon distance from the true optimal arm. Okay. So uh, here, the answer should be uh, a. A here is nothing but the maximum of the rewards of the true best arm in the LH phase, and uh, B is the maximum rewards of the true best arm in the L plus one at stage. Okay, so this and this is the correct uh, definition for A and B. Uh, so my answer should be uh, option one. Mm.
can you see my screen or is it stuck again i think it's stuck hello okay yeah no yeah, it came no okay okay last question uh, so uh, i have an assertion and reason so the confidence bound of each arm in the ucb algorithm cannot increase with the iterations that is incorrect because uh, with uh, with uh, increasing the number of iterations uh, the unselected arm grows by log of n okay so the assertion is incorrect and the second uh, the reason for that is the nj term in the denominator ensures that the confidence bound remains the same for unselected arm and decreases for the selected arm okay this is also incorrect so for the unselected arm the uh, numerator term has a log n dependency so it uh, it keeps on growing although at a, a smaller pace but it uh, still doesn't uh, uh, become uh, it uh, the confidence bound doesn't remain same for unselected arm it increases by log of n okay so both assertion and reason are incorrect so that's why my answer is option 4 okay so i think uh, this is uh, all uh, we covered uh, briefly what i wanted to present in uh, this thing i'll quickly uh, show you my screen is it visible uh, okay. yes okay cool cool okay so i'll quickly uh, share with you this code for uh, the multi arm bandit problem so uh, i i don't need, probably need to explain it in detail but uh, yeah i'll put it in the chat so it's for you to basically fill in the blanks and uh, solve the uh, basically have a look at the different different uh, uh, analysis that you can do for the multi arm bandit problem i'll quickly explain so what we do is uh, i import all the uh, necessary libraries in python and then uh, what i do is i set some random seed okay and then uh, uh, i basically select uh, my q star the uh, true q q estimate uh, sorry the true q value the ground truth q value uh, from uh, four distributions and uh, the parameters the for each distribution is is selected randomly okay so uh, for the first two arms i take a gaussian distribution for, for which i select two random means and two random uh, variants then the next two arms have a uniform distribution which uh, has the uh, which again has random the uh, lower and the upper uh, basically the low and the high of the uniform distribution then uh, for the poisson distribution i uh, randomly select two lambda values so that i have two different poisson distributions and lastly uh, two different random values for the beta distributions so the true means uh, is uh, calculated here for each distribution okay so for the gaussian distribution is it's the mean itself uh, for the uniform distribution it's the, the high plus low divided by two the mean of uh, both the quantities for the poisson distribution it's the lambda itself and for the beta distribution it's uh, a by a plus b okay so uh, here the above numbers are chosen arbitrarily they have no particular significance for real world problems the true means won't be available to you but since we know the parameters as well as the distribution we can analytically calculate the true means and this is only for the sake of exercise okay so uh, this function is basically uh, the uh, pull function for the multi arm bandit problem so all i need to do is i need to put in what arm that i want to pull so if i put in arm one i uh, get the uh, i get a, a reward which is drawn from that distribution so this is what uh, this pull arm function does so uh, what we do is uh, first we uh, make a brute force estimation so uh, we basically pull each arm thousand times to get enough samples for estimations and plotting so you see we have done a brute force method so each arm i'm pulling thousand times i uh, take the first arm i pull it thousand times second arm pull it thousand times and so on so i uh, keep a track of all the rewards and then uh, take an uh, take a uh, mean of all the rewards that have accumulated over time so here i should uh, get uh, this is the true mean value and this is the estimated mean value okay so you see that they are uh, somewhat uh, they are getting closer and closer to the true uh, value if i increase let's say from 1000 i make it to let's say 1 million i'll probably be uh, even more closer to the true mean okay so more number of arm pulls that you do uh, the closer you are in estimating the uh, true true mean okay so if i uh, this is a plotting plotting function if i plot these values i can see that uh, 
it is this this function is emulating uh, or rather the uh, samples that are drawn is emulating the distribution that uh, i had uh, um, that i had drawn that i had selected randomly the q star values that i had selected okay uh, yeah and uh, you see that this is how the how close the true mean and the uh, estimated mean are for each arm okay and yeah so the above four uh, plots show the common types of mm, distributions that we have used it's gaussian uniform poisson and beta with two arms for each so uh, it is uh, useful to know the underlying distributions but uh, in real world we don't have access to the underlying distributions and also we can't always do the brute force algorithm so i can't just take each arm and pull it a million times and go ahead so this is not the optimal way so i want to basically improve my decision making how i like uh, if i have uh, pulled uh, certain arms a uh, few number of times i should uh, be able to make a decision uh, wherein uh, what arm gives me better results and i should go ahead with that okay so for that we have uh, different different algorithms we have the epsilon greedy the softmax ucb1 and so on so uh, here uh, i would want you to implement the epsilon greedy and the uh, softmax distribution for the gaussian bandits so uh, here everything is given so uh you have five arms okay the pull mab function basically uh for each arm it will give you its associated reward and here you have to basically write your code for the epsilon greedy algorithm so here you need to fill in all the uh, details and uh, yeah now then you run the epsilon greedy algorithm after after you fill this function you basically execute this code this will run the epsilon greedy algorithm and then uh, next you uh, plot whatever estimate that you have gotten okay so here because uh, all the q values are initially estimated so all the q values initially are zero okay so uh, with uh, if you ex write your own code and execute it uh, you see with the number of uh, with the number of steps the uh, the q value should uh, slowly convert to the true mean value okay so this is something you can execute and figure it out and uh, this is done for epsilon equal to zero. So uh, next thing you want to do is basically try and plot similar convergence plot for epsilon 0 0.01 and uh, also for epsilon 0 0.1. And you basically see you know, the difference in the performance when you're taking a two low epsilon and uh, slightly increasing the epsilon value, okay? So this is something that uh, uh, you should probably try out. Uh, I'll discuss the solution for this in week three. Okay, so I hope uh, this is clear. Uh, so I have put the link in the chat. If not, uh, I'll also link it in the video description when I upload this uh, video to YouTube. So yeah, uh, I think that's it from my end. If you have any other questions, uh, you may ask. Or otherwise, it's already time, so we can end the lecture today. Uh, okay, so I assume uh, we don't have any questions. Okay, you have a question? Okay. Uh, okay, sure. I, I'll then uh, stop the recording. And if uh, you still have any questions, feel free to uh, you know uh, write it in the discussion forum. Uh, we keep on monitoring that, and uh, we answer the question as and when we get time. Okay. So yeah, thank you for attending. Uh, have a good weekend. Uh, yeah. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.